alam na po na forensic examination ng isang batang babae diyan po sa Antipolo Rizal. Wala pong tembak sa kardang bata pero nandun po ang mga klase na kasabay na maturuhan. Sa pong katibayan na hindi lahat talaga ay nabigyan ng card. At yan po ay may mga salaysay na sila at pinabit yung dalawang kaklase na kasabay niyang napakunahan. Nang tembak siya nang walang blood test, walang screening, walang informed consent. So ngayon po ay uh, meron po tayong pangatlong sulat sa palaso ng Malacanang. Third letter po ito, pakiusap. At pakinggan po natin ang summary ng letter na ito. At uh, ito po ay nareceive na sa Malacanang kaninang umaga. Pakinggan po natin ang ating Deputy Chief Public Attorney, Annalisa Soriano. Third extremely urgent letter request to veto <clears throat> for being A. Illegal and contrary to the law B. Unconstitutional writer, despotic, whimsical, and vindictive and C. Oppressive violation of Civil Service Commission rules and regulations for career and permanent government workers The following prohibition in the General Appropriations Bill for 2021 Forensic Laboratory Division. Nothing in the appropriation provided in this act shall be used for the salaries or compensation of personnel, travel allowance, meetings, and other maintenance and other operating expenses of the PAL Forensic Laboratory Division. On November 27, we submitted an extremely urgent request to veto the inserted provision prohibiting the use of maintenance and other operating expenses for the operations of the PAL forensic laboratory and allocations for personnel services. Because of such provision, appropriations were already allocated to the PAO in the National Expropriation Program was prohibited from being used for the travel allowance, meetings, and maintenance and other operating expenses of the PAO Forensic Laboratory Division, as well as the salaries or compensation of our permanent Lentilia personnel of the PAO Forensic Laboratory Division. Our letter was supplemented by our communication dated December 10. At this point, Your Excellency, we have already fully established the constitutional, legal, and jurisprudential basis for the existence and continued operation of the PAO Forensic Laboratory Division. Under pain of being repetitive, forensic services is, is, is indispensable in the investigation and legal representation and assistance demanded of PAO by RA 9406 or the PAO law, RA 9745 or the Anti-Torture Act, and RA 9262 or the Anti-Violence Against Women and Children Act. Under the doctrine of necessary implication, forensic services is being subsumed in investigation and legal representation and assistance. The clear and unmistakable intent of the aforementioned special laws providing legal aid to specific sectors in the society cannot be overcome by a general law such as the General Appropriations Act because a general law containing provisions repugnant to those of the special law and without making any mention of its intention to amend or modify such special law cannot be deemed to have intended an amendment, repeal, or modification of the latter. The PAL Forensic Laboratory Division with its Galtia personnel was created by the DBM pursuant to its authority granted under the GAA of 2018 or RA 10964. <clears throat> In Commission on Human Rights Employees Association versus CHR, the Supreme Court affirmed the power among others of the DBM under the revised administrative code to create positions. Defunding the PAL Forensic Laboratory Division violates Article 3, Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law because plenty of personnel will be deprived of their right to their salary and other entitlements, contrary to their right to security of tenure as espoused in RA 6656 or an act to protect the security of tenure of civil service officers and employees in the implementation of government reorganization, which provides that 
no officer or employee in the career service shall be removed except for a valid cause and after due notice and hearing. It also violates Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution that no person shall be denied the equal protection of the law because the CHR has more than 320 million peso budget for their human rights protection services, including forensic and medical legal services. And Article 3, Section 1, that no person shall be denied the equal protection of the law, is the Article 3, Section 11, that free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Because PAL clients, in view of their poverty, will be deprived of the opportunity to counter the forensic findings of the PNP or NBI, unlike those represented by private legal practitioners. Utilization of the allocations for MOE and PS for the operations of the PAL Forensic Laboratory is imperative to uphold the Constitution, the law, and jurisprudence. Deprivation of the use of MOE is oppressive a grave injustice and illegal per se, and tantamount to constructive dismissal without due process of law. Oppression is an extreme violation of CSC revised rules and administrative cases in the civil service. Called from all the foregoing, it is clear that the very existence of the PAU Forensic Laboratory Division, and not merely its plantilla personnel, rather as an organizational unit with its plantilla personnel, is valid as it was created by virtue and by authority of law and pursuant to the 1987 Constitution. It goes to reason then that utilization of both the MOE and PS allocations for the operations of the PAU Forensic Laboratory is crucial in PAU's performance of its mandate and realization of the constitutional protections afforded to PAU's clientele. The truth be told, can an organizational unit function without both MOOE and PS? It is highly oppressive for a governmental unit to be expected to perform its mandate with allocations only for the salaries and other entitlements of its personnel. It is, after all, impossible for government personnel to be able to do their job without, without spending for supplies and other MOOE. Otherwise, they would be forced to spend their own earnings just to continue the unit's operation. Still, this would be grossly unfair and unjust, not to mention a clear act of oppression. Oppression is also known as grave abuse of authority, which is a misdemeanor committed by a public officer who, under color of his office, wrongfully inflicts upon any person any bodily harm, imprisonment, or other, or other injury. It is an act of cruelty, severity, or excessive use of authority. The Constitution specifically provides that labor is entitled to, human con to humane conditions of work. These conditions are not restricted to the physical workplace, but include as well the manner by which employees treat their <coughs> employers treat their employees. If the utilization of MOOE for the operations of the PAU Forensic Laboratory Division is prohibited, then the working environment of the PAU Forensic Laboratory plantilla personnel would be exposed to an inhumane condition of work. Oppressive acts will be struck down regardless of the character or nature of the actor. Under, under Rule 10, Section 50 of the CSC Arlacks, oppression is punishable by suspension, of six months and money to one year for the first offense and dismissal for the second offense. As a matter of fact, this allowing the PAU Forensic Laboratory plantilla personnel from using funds for office supplies and other MOE is tantamount to constructive dismissal. If they will be denied of the opportunity to utilize MOE funds, they will eventually be left with no other choice but to, their, but to resign. The, the Supreme Court held the test of constructive dismissal is whether a reasonable person in the employee's position would have felt compelled to give up his position under the circumstances. Depriving PAU Forensic Laboratory plantilla personnel would demoralize public servants and discourage efficient individuals from joining the government. This would be highly counterproductive to the government's effort to improve public service, 
Paul's vision of providing world-class free legal aid service, which we believe our clients deserve, would be put at naught. It is on the basis of all the foregoing that we humbly plead for your Excellency's exercise of your constitutional prerogative to veto the illegal and unconstitutional rider inserted by Minority Senator Franklin Gerlon and allowed by Senator Sari Andara. Under Article 6, Section 27 of the Constitution, the President shall have the power to veto any particular item or items in an appropriation, revenue, or tariff bill, but the veto shall not affect the item or items to which it does not object. Although labeled a special provision, and even if it be treated as such, it is actually an inappropriate provision that should be treated as an item for, per, for the purpose of the President's veto power. Even if the provision be treated as a condition or restriction, the Supreme Court also discussed that the inherent power of appropriation is the power to specify how money shall be spent and that in addition to distinct items of appropriation, the legislature may include in appropriation bills qualifications, conditions, limitations, or restrictions. By all measures, the illegal and unconstitutional rider inserted by Senator Grillon and allowed by Senator Agara has no place in the GA for 2021. It attempts to amend RA 9406, RA 9745, and RA 9262 through a general appropriations bill, which is inappropriate. And worse, it completely goes against the spirit of the constitutional rights to due process equal protection and free access to justice. Yes. Ito na prayer natin. We are thus most respectfully pleading and praying that your honor as champion of the masses, the poor, underprivileged, and oppressed, number one, veto for being illegal and constitutional, vindictive, arbitrary, unjust, and oppressive, the insertion in the general appropriations bill for 2021 through an unethical machination. And number two, as chief executive, to ensure the continuous and improved delivery of adequate legal representation and assistance to indigents through forensic services to the millions of Filipino poor clients of power. At the risk of sounding repetitive, you, Mr. President, are the only hope not only of power, but of our millions of poor, downtrodden, and oppressed clients who, more often than not, feel that justice remains to be elusive because of their dire financial state, which prevents them from fully representing their cases in court. Signed by uh, Chief Procedure Reda Acosta, Deputy Chief Sylvester Mosing, Ana Soriano, and Attorney Marlon Buwan, Reverend Ramos Bacpano, Demi Giruelta, Ronald Jerome Nieves, Sir Delisa Mereros, Rijal Salvador, and Ms. Alma Lepo. Copy furnish, Senator um, Christopher Lawrence Bongo, Bongo, Secretary Wendell Avisado of the DBM, Under Secretary Tina Rose Maricanda of the DBM, and Under Secretary Janet P. Aguila. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chief Public Attorney Anna. Ito po yung pangatlong letter. Pos umaga, meron pa po kami pang-apat. Dito po sa tatlong grounds na nandito ay bali pito na, pito, magiging pito po ito ng mga legal basis namin ng request for pito. Bali tatlo pa lang po. Meron pa pong apat, uh, kaya kukumpletoy namin po yung pang-apat para bukas. Makulit po kami pero kailangan po kasi sabi sa aklat na banal o Biblia ay kahit yung masamang hukom kapag ulit-ulit na dinaingan ng uh, babaeng bao o babaeng ulila, yuta ay nakinig po yung likong hukong. Dito po, hindi naman liko po ang ating Pangulo. Siya po ay makamasa, ma makabayan. Eh, maaari po sana mapakinggan na ang aming hiling na hindi po magwagi itong illegal contra to law and constitutional rider. Oppressive. May oppression po ito. Alam niyo po ba ang isang opisya ng gobyero pero pwede matanggal sa trabaho kapag guilty of oppression, cruelty, 
sa mga empleyado niya. Kaya po pang na nagwagi po itong ano na to, hindi na bito to, eh pwede po ma-expose sa kaso ang Pangulo, ako at ang DPM Secretary ng Opresyon dahil inapi po itong mga doktor, mga empleyado ng Power Forensic Laboratory Division. Eh kaya po napaka balito po itong request natin ito at ang sigaw ng bayan lumpok na po kami nalulugmok ang bayan eh dapat bangon bayan salamat po sa mga vlogs, comments suporta ng mga religious groups at na mga istasyon ng telebisyon at radyo na sumisigaw po na pagbigyan po kami at ang masang Pilipino na ibito po ng Pangulo ito okay pa, Rodo Kelvin Uh, may araw po na ito kanina, uh, may mga nakapanood sa inyo nung eksaminasyon na ginawa po natin ito sa number 116 na victim ng Tayvaxia. No? Uh, ito po yung pinakahuli nating uh, in-examine. No? Uh, ito yung isang instance na kung mawala ang forensic laboratory, ito na rin yung uh, mawawala na serbisyo natin sa ating mga kababayan na uh, saan sila lalapit kung wala ang forensic laboratory. At palagay ko ito rin yung dahilan kung bakit gusto nilang mawala ang forensic laboratory. No? Uh, malapit na po mag-testify kami doon sa kaso ni Red Santillan. No? Kung nasusundan ninyo yun, yun ay uh, may kakaroon na ng bail hearings ngayon. Ano? at nagpe-present na sila ng prosecution evidence. No? Malapit na tayo mag-testify doon. At uh, isa yan sa mga maapektuhan kung mawala po ang Power Forensic Laboratory. At itong kaso na ito, for example, itong debug sa case number 160 ngayon, ano? kung mawawala ang Power Forensic Laboratory, sino ang mag-testify in court as to the findings? No? Kita ninyo kanina, Kitang-kita ang uh, ebidensya na ang batang ito ay kinamatay ay pagdurugo ng utak, pamamaga ng utak, together with uh, pulmonary hemorrhage. No? Yun, yun ang kanyang immediate cause of death. No? Consistent with all the other findings namin doon sa 159, the other 159 na impact sa victims. No? At uh, all of these findings, they want eliminated, no? Uh, yun ang magiging resulta nito kung maabolish, maging successful si Senador Angara at saka Senador Dridon. No? At tingin namin yan ang talagang pinakadahilan, pinakamahipit na dahilan kung bakit nila ginagawa ito. We know for a fact that they are affiliated with the ACRA law firm. No? Abogado ng Sanofi dito sa kasong ito. No? At uh, alam natin na matindi ang kanilang paghahangad, no? na ipanalo itong kasong ito. Kaya ini-eliminate nila dito yung ebidensya at mga witnesses who will testify against their client. So ito ay personal interest. Profe personal and professional interest no? ni Senador Angara at saka ni Senador Trilon. No? Hindi, ito, hindi ito interest para sa bayan. No? In fact, ang, yung ginawang Ginawa nito na nag-insert si Senator Trilon sa Senator Angara is against the Filipino people. Laban ito sa taong bayan itong ginawa nila. No? Dahil lang sa personal and professional interest ni Senator Angara at Senator Trilon, no? nagawa nilang pagtaksilan ang taong bayan. Dahil ginamit nila ang kanilang interest, pansariling interest, no? imbes na Mahalin nila ang taong bayan at uh, gumawa sila ng para sa taong bayan ay pinahihirapan at ginigipit nila ang taong bayan. Ginigipit din nila ang ahensya, isa sa mga ahensya na tumutulong sa taong bayan sa mga mahihirap na mga Pilipino. No? Kaya itong panggigipit na ito, tingin ko hindi ito makakalimutan ng taong bayan. Eh. Itong ginawa nila sa public attorney's office. Pangalawang taon na po ito na ginagawa sa amin. Second year na ginawa sa amin ito. At malamang next year gagawin pa uli ito ni Senador Angara at Senador Trilon dahil nakaupo pa rin sila. Ito lesson na sa atin eh, sa ating mga Pilipino. 
na pag tayo bumoto ng mga katulad nitong senador na ito, ganyan ang gagawin sa atin. Lahat ng mga ahensya na tumutulog sa mga mahihirap, gigipitin nila yan. Tatanggalan ng budget no? pag hindi sumunod sa kanila. No? Sa gusto nila. Alam nila na hindi nila kaya kami utusan. Ang kaya lang mag-utos sa amin no? na magtrabaho ay yung batas. Yun ang sinusunod ho namin. Yung legal directives no? from the president or his alter ego, the secretary, uh, the secretary of justice. No? Yun po ang sinusunod namin. Kaya habang meron direktiba, hindi ho kami hindi kami titigil na mag-investiga dito. Habang may direktiba ang Pangulo through the Secretary of Justice, no? Secretary Aguirre nga po yun, magtutuloy-tuloy po kami. No? Kahit nagkipitin kami ng kipitin ni Senador Trillo at Senador Agara. Uh, magpapasalamat tayo sa mga kasama sa media na nandito at sumama po sa forensic exam. At uh, sila po yung mga witnesses na examination from Manila Standard, uh, Ms. Rio, Rio Araha, from Filipino Mirror, Radio Filipino, Benedict Abaygar, Irwin Corpus, ang Police Files tonight, Ander Mucha, ang Tribune, uh, Arli Calalo, ang Manila Times, sa Primate, nandito ba si Jeff Tombano? Ayan, yeah. nandito po ang ng Bulgar, si Neil Miranda, DCME, wala na. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo at sa lahat po nang nagmo-monitor ibang kasama sa media, sa live po kayo mag-monitor sa mga friends natin o PAO, meron po dyan. At uh, ipopost po namin, uh, siguro bukas na yung uh, copy nitong ano, picture copy nitong letter. At bukas po may sulat na pang-apat po kami na may pitong uh, legal basis bakit dapat mabito po ito. Ngayon, may mga statement na naman po yung isa sa respondent dito sa kaso. E bahala na po si Lord sa kanya. Na ipaliwanag po namin ang lahat ng sagot sa mga aligasyon. Mga sinasabing duplication lang ang pao kahit hindi kami duplication. Yung sinasabing fake ang aming uh, mga experts. E do, ay, ang nagdeklara na nga po, korte. At uh, ito po pag uh, virtually pag-abolish ng PAO Forensic Laboratory ay isa po criminal act ito. At ito po ay talagang to abort the uh, scheduled forensic examination pa po ng daang-daang uh, namatay sa Timbaxia na hindi pa po napupuntahan ng team. So maraming salamat po sa inyo. Pabuhay po kayo. Meron po ba tanong? First and last. Uh, oppressive acts to ng karagdagan na nun. So, who, who are these oppressive people? Sino yung, yung oppressors? Yung nag-sponsor nag mo nito. Dahil ang sabi po sa akin ng ibang senador at congressman, hindi naman napag-debatehan to. Sinuksok lang bigla to eh. Ipinadala po ito sa lower house lang eh. Eh, hindi na po tinaykap sa bicameral dahil madidelay po yung budget. Eh, importante po ang budget. May pandemic po tayong kinaharap eh. Kailangan po yung budget na to, yung GA 2021. Kaya ang advice po sa akin ng mga kaibigan natin sa Kongreso, mababa at mataas na kapulungan, dalhin na lang po natin kay uh, uh, PRR dito. At uh, nasa konsultusyon naman yung pagbito sa isang item. Isang sentence lang po ito eh. Dali pong burahin ito. Dali nila yung bito ito for being contrary to law. Contrary to constitution. Oppressive. Oppression po. Krimen krim po yun. Under the Ombudsman Rules. Opo, krimen po ito eh. Yung ginagawang ito eh. Pagtatanggal ng mga tao ng walang valid cause, hindi po basta administrative uh, sa ano to, oppression eh. May criminal aspect po ito. At may obstruction of justice na criminal offense din po under special law. Na hindi mo pwedeng sangkaan ang mga testigo o ang mga ebidensya ay patayin mo ang ebidensya. Opo, virtually pinapatay ang ebidensya. Opo, obstruct. So, inu-obstruct yung paghulog ng katarungan. Opo. Oppression, ibig sabihin, paninikil, kalupitan sa Tagalog. 
Okay, search nyo po yung Google nyo. Makikita nyo sa Google Supreme Court Decisions. Lalabas ang definisyon ng, ng oppression. Opa. Clarification lang yung ship, no? Pero Opa. kung ano, does it follow na kung halimbawa hindi mabito dito sila dito, does it follow na uh, para magiging part din siya na ano, na mag-go-oppress mag kung yun know, na, kung, 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 kung hindi mabito dahil... Hindi po mabito, pati ako pa kasuhan. Okay. Kasi hindi ko po mapasuelto. Nasa, nasa budget eh. Yung swelto na, yung MOE naman, alam nyo may MOE ng PAW, hindi kagaya sa CHR na may separate for forensic and medical legal examination sila. Meron. May PS sila para doon. May MOE sila. 320 million plus sa taong ito. Hindi ko pa nga alam kung magkano itong sa GIA 2021 kung gaano in-increase nitong mga kakampi nila. O, oh. eh, isang taong po, yung aming MOE, isang lamsam lang yun. Mula pa rin hanggang ulo sa labing pitong regional offices namin. Sa 380 plus na district offices namin, isang lamsam lang yun eh. Doon namin kukunin lahat ng kuryente, tubig, telepono, o pang gasolina. Doon namin kukunin yung supplies. Doon namin kukunin. Hindi ako po yung mga kaso ng opresyon. Pag hindi ko pinaswerte, pwede ako i-demanda ng mga yan. Panggigipit, yun. Pangaabi. Matindi po ito. Hindi po dapat payagan ng Pangulo na ang isang krimen ay maganap sa pamamagitan ng isang pangungusap na magiging batas. Nothing in this appropriation code and code shall be used for the salaries, allowances, maintenance and operating expenses of the PAO Forensic Laboratory Division. Division, mga tao po yan. Kaya sabi ko, hindi sila pusa. Hindi sila palaka. Hindi sila daga. Tao. Napakaliwanag po sa sikat ng araw. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa mga vloggers, sa mga friends ng mga malalita na talagang aktibo sa social media. At yun po sa mga istasyon, DCWB, na-interview po ako, UNTV, SMNI, ayan, Radyo Aguila, Net25. Talaga pong uh, weekend, nag-i-interview sila. Salamat po sa inyo. Dito makikita natin kung sino po yung mga istasyon ng radio at telebisyon na talagang makamaralita at hindi sakita lamang ang tinitignan. Hindi negosyo. Kagaya rin po ng mga media, kayo po, kayo po ay para sa maralita ng Pilipino at ginagampanan yung tungkulin sa bayan. Patugtugin nga natin ang timpo ng mga api at maralita sa ating bayan. Bilang closing po natin. What's up mga tropa peeps?